Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. This is the fourth work day of the week, the day that our calendar calls a Wednesday in the midst of the week, as Daniel says. And we happen to be on February 13th of the year 2013. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. Knowledge gives light for your daily walk, day 44 of the year 2013. Brethren, again, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you can go back, study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button below this video, brethren, to start and stop this little study as we go along so that you can open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. And I also, again, suggest that you use the five W's in doing any Bible study. The who, what, where, when, and why was this particular verse given. That way you can come to a much fuller understanding of what it's talking about. Well, brethren, let's get right back into knowledge gives light for your daily walk. We're we'll going to start reading in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 26. Upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of man upon it. Brethren, remember what that a likeness is. Uh, that is the likeness of Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, First Timothy kind of explains man, explains this. In First Timothy two five, the man. Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, as your King James would say. Now in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, made in the likeness of men, found in fashion as a man. And in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, for as much as the children are partakers of the flesh and the blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Talking about Satan. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, I am he that is living, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Romans chapter 6 and verse 9. Christ being raised from the dead is dying no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he is living. He is living unto God. In John chapter 6 and verse 62. What and if you shall see the Son of Man extend up where he was before? That means Christ going back to the Father. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20. He raised him from the dead, that is the Father did, and set him on his own right hand in heavenly places. That Father is the Almighty Father. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9, in him is dwelling all the fullness of the Godhead body. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4, though he was crucified through weakness, yet he is living by the power of God, for we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God. In Psalms chapter 119 and verse 50, Thy word has quickened me. 
in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made the quickening spirit. Now we read in John chapter 5 and verse 26. As the Father has life in himself, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself. In John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, Christ speaking, our Lord speaking, I am the resurrection and the life. He that is believing in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever is living and believing in me shall never die. John chapter 1 and verse 4 and verses 12 through 13. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, or the knowledge of men. As many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In John chapter 6 and verse 63, it is the spirit that is quickening. The flesh is profiting nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, The word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even into the divining asunder of the soul, and of spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. If today I should get lost amid the preplexes of life and the rush of many duties, search me out, gracious Lord, and bring me back into the quiet of your presence. Knowledge is the light that comes from God, not from the tradition of men. Life and Light, John chapter 14 and verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, I pray that you do not make void the word of God. You know, again I will read from Mark. The word of God, the word of Christ himself. That's why we get all of this. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 6. Well hath Eliza prophesied of you hypocrites, and it is written, the people is honoring me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Verse 7, how bid in vain they do worship me, teaching doctrines the commandment of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. What other such things we do? The Catholics now have Ash Wednesday. Then they're going to come up on Easter, which is not in the Bible. The word Easter is Pasha, which meaning Passover, and it can't come on Sunday every week. It, every year, it, it, it changes. They use God's calendar and not man's calendar. Verse 9, full well you reject the commandment of God, that you keep your own traditions. And verse 13, making the word of God of none effect, 
through your traditions which you have delivered and many such like things that you do. Brethren, try to break away from man's tradition. We've all been brought up with that. The sweet tickling ears that they give you, the wonderful music of Christmas. That is the Mass of Christ. Christ wasn't born anywhere near December 25th. And at the Passover, they never did roll eggs up and down the yard for little children. Oh, I give the children a lot of fun. But teaching them the ways of the devil is not the right way to go. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation with the Father and the Son, get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you. To drive away all doubt. To strengthen your faith. To show you that narrow path that leads to that kingdom and eternal salvation. And brethren, while you're on your knees asking for forgiveness for following the tradition of men, Ask him also for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter he has given to you. And that love letter is in your own Bible. Now, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for